Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I'm going to be reviewing a book for you that I mentioned in my most anticipated reads or releases of 2016 first quarter, and that is Every Anxious Wave by Mo Devo. I might be mispronouncing that and I'm sorry if I am. Um, I received this book from the publisher. I got a NetGalley copy of it and then the lovely publicist was so nice to send me a hardcover book which I was really excited about when this showed up because the cover is so beautiful and simple and even the back, the way they've got the quotes is really cool. It's kind of like, you know, radio waves. And um, yeah, it's just beautiful. I really enjoyed it so I'm happy to have this in my collection. Let's talk about plot. So I mentioned it a bit in my previous video where I was talking about this um, and it's a story about a man and his friend who find a wormhole in the one guy's closet and they use it to go back in time to see rock concerts and when I first heard that premise I just thought that was so unique and bizarre and I was like, you know, of all the things you would use a wormhole or time travel for, going back in, in time to go to concerts. And I will mention at the end of this video because I started thinking about it, which concerts I would probably go back and see or which bands I would go back and see. Um, but look forward to that at the end because I'm sure that it will be incredibly embarrassing. But back to the plot. So, by accident, Carl sends Wayne back to 980 instead of 1980, and that's where the plot thickens. So, because there are certain conditions of the wormhole that require electricity in order for you to come back from wherever you are, obviously 980 New York, there's no electricity yet, so... He ends up trying to get in touch with a physicist and he finds Lena, who is a physicist in the area, and he has to convince her that A, he's not crazy, he does in fact have a wormhole in his closet, and B, that she should help him. So that's where the plot really takes off and starts to get more and more complex. We explore the relationship between Lena and Carl because working on this brings them together and we learn more about each of them and their past. We learn what rock concerts Lena would go back and see and we also learn that maybe that's not the only thing they're using the wormhole for. One of the things I really loved about this book was the characters. So they're very real people. Carl, our main character, is someone who has a lot of regrets in life and we get to see those things and what brought him to this point in his life and he's kind of miserable and lonely and then he meets Lena and Lena is somebody else who who has a lot of things in her life she wished had gone a different way. She is a beautiful curvy girl and she is sort of an alternative heroine basically. Like she's not your average, you know, stick thin, perfect YA character. She is a real girl and that's what I loved about her. We get to hear about their tattoos and the meanings behind them and just so many things that make them more real than I feel like some characters are in YA and contemporary novels. And I thought that that really added to the story because I think the story would have been less interesting if we were dealing with people who were just typical and perfect and didn't really have the demons that Lena and Carl have. I really took away from this book a look at how our actions can influence our present and our future and what each of those things can kind of mean in the context of our life. How something so small can make such a big difference and how something that's pretty big can change our lives in ways that we don't yet know. And that's what I really thought was interesting about this is that we sort of look at a person's life starting in the present and then looking backwards and it's it's one of those things where it's like you know in an alternate world what would I be like if I hadn't experienced this or if I had done this differently or if this person in my life had been more supportive or had been this kind of a person and I thought that that was really interestingly done because of how the approach to it was made in this book so 
I definitely thought that it was unconventional in some ways and I really enjoyed that about this book. And another aspect of this book that surprised me is that it really was a love story and it was an unconventional love story and I don't want to say too much about that because I don't think there's really any way to talk about the love story without there being spoilers but I did want to mention that because I thought that it was a really different take on a love story and how we get there and the paths that lead us to the end are really lovely and fascinating and I feel like if I reread this book that I would pick up on things that I didn't see the first time and I would really understand the love story better than I did on a first read. So I would absolutely recommend that you go pick this up if this sounds at all interesting to you. If you are into time travel books, I think this will be a different look at it than you're used to because it is kind of a contemporary romance a little bit, um, but with that science fiction twist thrown in there. And I just think that this is a fun book for really anybody that is is a music fan or is a YA fan, loves contemporaries, it can stretch across a lot of genres. There are triggers in here for self-harm and rape, so keep that in mind if you're going to pick it up. I'm glad that I got a chance to pick this up and read it because I really enjoyed it and it's been one of my favorite books of the month. Alright, so I did say that I was going to share with you some of the concerts I would go back and see if I had the chance. And so I probably would revisit one or two concerts that I went to. I would definitely go back to Warp Tour. I loved Warp Tour when I was a teenager. I used to go to the Atlanta leg of the tour and we would have such an amazing time just going from stage to stage and laying around in the sun and just really enjoying ourselves. Um, I didn't ever get to see Hanson in concert when I was a teenager. I saw them when I was 21, 22, something like that. Saw them much later in life, so I would I would go back and I would see them when I was a teenager just so that I could have the comparison of what that experience was like compared to seeing them as an adult um, because I was, I was and still am a huge Hanson fan. And I never got to see the Spice Girls, so I would probably go back and see the Spice Girls because I hear they put on an incredible show and that would just be a lot of fun. Uh, here's one that's a surprising one, but I would love to go back and see the Monkees in concert. So my dad was a really big fan of the Monkees when he was a teenager and so I grew up sort of listening to that music and it kind of stuck with me. Like I love the Monkees movie and I used to listen to those soundtracks in my car when I was a teenager, which is so weird, but I still have such a nostalgia for their music, so I would totally go back and see them. So most of my concerts, I think, are a little embarrassing. I, I saw a lot of like punk concerts and ska and that kind of thing when I was a teenager, so I feel like I got my fill of some of those bands. Like, I can still go see Less Than Jake if I want to go see Less Than Jake. Um, I don't know about like Saves the Day or any of those bands, but basically I would go back and see some of the bands I missed out on when I was like in full on teeny bopper mode because, I mean, you never get to experience that in full on teeny bopper mode again. Am I right? So again, I really enjoyed this book. I hope that you guys will check it out if it sounds interesting to you. If you are going to check it out, definitely let me know. And I would love to know what bands you would go back and see in concert if you had the chance because I'm really interested in that. I, I feel like now I'm gonna go around asking people because of this book because, I mean, it says a lot about a person what band they choose to go back and see. Like, I feel like I should go back and see some of the legends, but I don't really have any interest in them. Mostly I just want to see ridiculous teeny bopper bands. Well, I hope you guys are having a wonderful day, and I will see you next time. Bye!